Is there any way to find out what ads competitors are running on Facebook? Because of ads library. You cannot hide anything. You cannot hide your top performing creatives or you cannot, you cannot hide your testing creatives. You cannot hide any of your kind of landing pages. So ads library, ads library API, plus tools which utilize as library API, getting the data from, from a library API and, and kind of giving you some insights. These insights might be top performing creatives, uh, how long these creatives were life, kind of new creatives, what are the reach for these creatives in the European Union, even hooks. You can have some kind of the same statistic for hooks, which is absolutely amazing and absolutely necessary. Try to find a competitor that is in the top charts because they're probably spending money on marketing. So I picked real short as an example, right? I, they're number 11 in the top US app store right now, according to Sinstar. I go to the Facebook ads library, easy to find. I put real short in there and I can look through and what we've typically done is just gone to the very end. So it looks like a lot of ads. What are some other things that like people might not know about? Just type uh, the a keyword there. You can type there page ID, for instance, a fasting, for instance, like, and that's it, like just presenter and, and you'll have uh, oh, ads which have fasting in mm. right and then you it's a kind of discovery phase right mm. it's when you can actually get you know fresh ideas i would say there are two stages of uh, working with this library first one is discovery stage just to get as much pages as possible and in other one it's like you know concrete analyze the pages which you know that you're interested in when you click on the see more you'll have kind of more data about targeting and the reach numbers it reach targeting and reach by by age group and gender so you go to the competitor maybe go into the eu and then figure out which countries in the eu they're running on and then what are the demographics that have the highest reach you should really programmatically work on this data and you know you should create your kind of team routine of analyzing this data and pulling out the insights from it you can work on these insights only to, to feed your growth the easiest way is to pull it in Google spreadsheet. Mm. You can utilize uh, Epic connector when you can put the get request, which regularly kind of daily checks uh, numbers on as using as library API and kind of builds your kind of graph of, of kind of your competitors reach, for instance, mm. or, you know, any other stuff which you can get from this library. What are your favorite products and tools? I, I can call one is the for play. They have a spider tool, which is, which does a lot of research actually using the, using the API. So this is, this is a yeah, tool that you tool. like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is the tool. Yeah. Okay. Nice. This is a tool. And then you could track your competitors with this tool. So it's kind of utilizing the, the meta API and then give you. It has all the descriptions and then, you know, all the kind of stuff. Do you have a favorite product for content creation? I do. Last year, we had a lot of good cases with AI-generated UGC creatives. These tools are extremely important, extremely applicable for uh, very fast prototyping, right? Yes. When you just got the new, new, new hook, and for you, it takes kind of a while to find the proper kind of creator, right, to make, to make this video for you. This is why you can easily kind of, in five minutes, generate AI kind of video. With the, with the character, which looks like a, a real human and which tells whatever you want to tell the, her or he or she, or she. It's, it's very fast, but again, it's a fast prototyping actually, because you know, this, this kind of tools has some limits and right. You should understand that this video probably going to leave for a couple of weeks and then you should, but then it gives you time to find a proper creator, right. To make this video for you or you, all these tools are extremely, extremely cool for translations right for localizations That's you can true. yeah it's like it's it's easy and it's it's like it's 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 free it's like it's almost free it's like it doesn't cost a lot of money right but and then you can you can make as much localization as possible for you because previously like your workflow was very kind of kind of more expensive because you should find a local kind of uh, creators they should pro they should create the kind of local versions of your top creators right and then you can test and then some of them were successful some of them are not but you paid for all of that right now you can for five ten dollars generate kind of ai version of this test it which works you can localize with the with the real creators which is which is cool right That's this yeah. is AI. what i recently see a lot of shift uh, as we as we have a, this need of 
kind of huge amount of creatives. So creative teams needs to be very, very efficient. This is why they put some kind of processes of their creative production uh, to outsource to AI, ideation, right? Kind of th th this type of things, right? When you have all these processes kind of structured, then you can easily uh, pull some parts and, and outsource them. Phantom says, how long should you allow an ad to run before killing it? Two days. Two days, that's it. Is there it's a really, minimum spend? Have, we need a lot of creators. To have a lot of creators, we need to we need to test a huge amount of creators. You cannot test a huge amount of creators if when every test costs a lot, right? So this process should be kind of cost cost efficient for you. It's it's extremely important. And then kind of we should find a balance between test accuracy and cost efficiency, right? We should find this balance, right? And you can build the graph for you, kind of the likelihood of choosing the right test winner in every second, like in every day from one to, I don't know, 12 days. And then you can pick the accuracy number which, which fits your needs. Usually this graph becomes kind of pretty plateauing on the second, on the third day. Do just boosting reels help to create brand? Yes. Why not? Absolutely. It, it helps you to create your audience which might be the, you know, the, the core for your brand. Right. Yeah. And I even and again, did um, my look, personal reel. Still kind of yeah. uh, building this muscle of building reels and boosting reels successfully. It builds your muscles of content production. This is probably one of the most important skills and, you know, competences which you need and your team needs actually. So you are, you are not only building your audience, you're building yourself as a content creator. And then you'll get to know your audience better. You'll get to know kind of the pain points of this audience better. And you'll get to know how to better address these pain points, right? Mm -hmm. What are the solutions do they need? So this is, this is extremely, extremely important skill. I love it.